Okay, welcome to episode two of Byron's Veggio Cooking Show. I'm very lucky today to have a special guest celebrity chef, Nigel, and he's gonna show us how to make the best pizza bases on earth, and then we're gonna to top them using some quality ingredients. So we'll start with the bases. Take it away, Nigel. Okay. G'day. I'm gonna do about a kilo of flour. Make quite a few. So I've got a kilo of flour here. It's uh, baker's flour, which is high in gluten, and to that I'm going to add some bread improver, which is uh, soy and some other things that help the yeast, uh, some really good food for the yeast to live on. Okay, so we've added about, what, three teaspoons of bread improver? About three hit, teaspoons hit to two a kilo. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Now I'm going to bloom my yeast, which means start the yeast growing. So I've got a... Uh, instant dried yeast here and I'm going to do probably three tablespoons. I don't think you can really have too much. And to my three tablespoons of yeast I'm going to add a teaspoon of honey which is some good food for the yeast as well. So that yeast is actually still alive is it Nige? Yes it's in a state of stasis, if you like. Right. Yes. And, and the honey gives it something to feed on, and yes. then that sort of activates it, and yep. then what you mix it through there after. Yep, we'll, we'll get to that, but for the moment, I need, um, for the yeast to be alive and not die, you need blood temperature water. So just run your hand under the water until it doesn't feel hot or cold. And we're going to probably do. Two cups of water-ish. If you feel that water barring, you'll probably feel that it's not really hot or cold. Yeah, exactly no? right. Yeah. Yeah. Just mix that up. And then you'll see in a few minutes that it starts to bloom. It starts to go a bit bubbly and changes. Right, so when we say bloom... We'll just have to see what that... We'll just have to show you. Yeah, yeah. Um, it starts growing, it makes a few small bubbles, it gets foamy. Right. Yeah. Cool. So on the other side, I'm going to get two teaspoons of salt. And it's very important that the, uh, the salt stays separate from the yeast at this stage because mm -hmm. the salt will kill the yeast. Right, I see. So we've got yeast here and then salt here, and we're going to put another cup of, same again, blood temperature water. Now with the salt, um, if we add too much salt to the mix when we add it all in, is that going to be a bad thing? Like, do we need to be precise about how much salt to put in? Fairly precise, yep. because the um, salt stunts the growth of the yeast, right. if not kills it. Okay, yes. so, yeah. so don't, don't add too much salt. No, better to add less. But if you put no salt in it, it won't taste good. Mm -hmm. yep. So you definitely need some salt, mm. not too much. Yep. Okay, good one. Okay, so we're just waiting for that to um, to set now. So the yeast to bloom. So how it's long starting approximately to. do you think we're waiting for there? Two minutes. Okay, so yep. not too long. Yep. Oh yeah, I can see it changing state. Yep. Get the camera look there. Let's see, it looks starting a little bit foam different. Up. Yep. Seems like it's alive. Good stuff. Not dead. So if it doesn't foam up at this stage, you probably want to throw your yeast away and get some new yeast. Okay. It's so possibly died. So what sort of um, shelf life are we talking? So if you go and buy a pack of yeast and you go and make some, some pizza bases, but then you don't use it again for six months, mm. is it likely that your yeast will be dead and you'll need to replace it? If you keep your yeast in the freezer, it should be alive for six months or a year, I reckon. I see. Yep. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Keep it in the freezer, it should be fine. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I think this has bloomed enough. It's definitely changed. It's gone foamy. So in my flour and bread improver mix, some olive oil. My yeast mixture. Give that a little stir in so that it doesn't touch my salt water too much and bring it together. Hopefully I've got the liquid to flour ratio right. At this stage it's much easier to make it more wet and dry it out with flour than it is to make it too dry and add more flour. Okay, I think 
that's okay. Some flour on the bench, like a boss. And now we're kneading. So to knead this, we're stretching the gluten. But if we don't stretch the gluten, it's a bit short bready, I would describe it as. Mm -hmm. And if we overstretch the gluten, it goes really floppy and some of the water starts coming back out. Right. So that's not very nice either. So this is where you've just got to get the feel for the dough. So it's, a, it's a delicate balance. So is there a, an obvious sign that you've done it right or is it something that you just kind of have to do a few times and you'll sort of know it? Um, the best way is to someone to get someone to show you and for them to go feel that mm -hmm. feel that mm -hmm. give it a go feeling pretty yeah. uh, pretty spongy yeah and rubbery so and then feel it a bit later and to just do it a few times yourself mm -hmm. it's flour and water it's pretty cheap so You can see that it's stretchy, just the way that it's, mm, and it's sort of starting to rip as I need it. Mm -hmm. So that tells me that most of the gluten has been stretched, mm -hmm. and some of it's just started to break a little bit. But it feels a bit different than before. A bit softer, mm -hmm. a bit more stretchy. So, so, so I just practice. I would just recommend practice and going. That feels nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's pretty much done. So that's I reckon it. you needed it then for about two minutes. Probably. Like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So now what we let this sit, do we? We yes. Let it double in size. It's going to become this big. Double, and then we're going to knock it back, and then we'll roll it. Okay, so it's been around 20 minutes now, and the, the mix has about doubled in size, right? So what Nigel's going to do now is he's actually going to knock it back, and so I'll let him explain what that's all about. So I'm just knocking most of the air out of it by giving it a big slap, which um, improves, it'll then proof again. The yeast will make some more carbon dioxide and make some more bubbles. The bubbles will be a bit different, there'll be some small bubbles, a bit like nice white bread and then hopefully there'll be some big bubbles too. Yeah, okay, so. so the first time we've let it double in size, mm. so we knock it back, um, we're, we're bringing it back to this size again, are we? We'll let yeah, it double we'll, again? we will let it double again okay. and then when we roll it for the trays, that'll be like a second knock back. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. So just like that, just give it a good whack and then so you're kneading it back in the oh, nice just ball again. To make it. All right, so we'll leave that sit again, maybe yeah. another, what, 15, 20? Probably about 15, 20, yeah. We can oh, have yeah. a little bit of a feel now. Again, feels very nice, mm. soft. It is softer, yeah. isn't it? You should be able to feel straight away whether it's right or not. Mm. Yeah, just... All right, we'll see you in 15. Okay, so we flat our dough rise for a second time. It's looking pretty big. So what's this, what's, what are we doing now, Nigel? Um, I think you're all going to do some chop chop while I just roll out a few bases. Okay, yeah. sounds good. And we might uh, put the pizza stone in the oven and get the oven on. Okay, so we've got a pizza stone here. This is just a cheap one I got from Aldi. So we're going to stick that in the oven and then we're going to preheat the oven to... 200. 200? 220. Good. Rather hot. Okay, so I've got a fan forced oven, so I've preheated it to 200. That's about 220 if you're on a regular non fan forced oven. Okay, so we're going to dice up some uh, mushrooms, and then we've got uh, some lovely Kalamata olives, 
Uh, we're going to use just basil pesto for the base and we also have some uh, sun-dried tomato pesto. We've got some lovely cheese-filled bell peppers, yellow and a red capsicum, lovely uh, Spanish onion and some multicoloured tomatoes. So it should be quite a uh, colourful, delicious pizza. Okay, so we always wash veggies before we eat them because it's all grown in poo, let's not forget. So you don't really want to be eating poo. So I always give a bit of a rinse before I dice them up. Okay, it's got six mushies to start with, that's probably enough. Cut them reasonably thin. How good's that? So as you can see, Nigel's rolling them out. He's put some um, flour down on the bench so it doesn't stick. Now I'm putting some polenta in my ball, which helps it slide off onto the stone, like little ball bearings. And you can't overestimate the importance of that stuff because I've tried it before where I haven't put enough on and it, it was a disaster. So yeah, polenta on the board, it's good stuff. Okay, so I've diced up the mushy. Now I'm going to do the Spanish onion. Just halved or boiled? Yeah, just halved. Just do a, um, I think we'll do a margarita. A real simple one with flashed tomatoes. Sounds good. Let's show off the sexy tomatoes. Now, to me, that looks like the makings of a pretty sweet pizza. So today we're just going to um, use a mix of uh, regular, plain, boring, um, tasty cheese and some parmesan. You can use whatever cheese you like. Romano goes well. Um, you can get, even get those pizza cheese mixes that you get from the supermarket. You know, you can't really go wrong. If it's cheese, it's pretty good. 
Also like to use a bit of blue cheese on pizza, that's pretty good too. Alright chef, do the honours. Alright, well I think we'll do a simple one first. There's a pesto. A bit of olive oil in there. You can see the dough's still proofing. This is something you'll find the first time you make your own um, pizza bases like this. If you're just used to using, you know, supermarket ones or whatever, is as you go through the batch the dough will actually get fatter and fatter. So you might start with a thin and crispy and end up with a deep base and that, that's perfectly normal. You haven't done something wrong. That's just like Nigel says, the, the dough is still proofing. We'll probably end up saying that the last pizzas are the best ones. And like all good things, you know, sometimes it's worth the wait. So, you know, the longer you leave it, the, the the, the fatter they might get and the more chewy and delicious and puffy and awesome they are so don't be worried about you know taking your time with it sometimes you know the best things take a little while to achieve Nice and simple, really delicious I reckon. Salt and pepper, what do you think? And that's it I reckon. I think we're going to have to wait 10 more minutes for the oven to get really hot. Mm -hmm. Yep, 5 minutes. And we'll be cooking. And then once it's in there, how long do you think we're putting them in the oven for, Nige? Around 10 minutes. Maybe 9, maybe 12. I think it might be 10, 12 minutes. That's my guess. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so the oven's nice and hot and the pizza's ready to go in. We're ready to chuck her in. Now Byron keeps asking me, what's the technique of getting it off the tray easily? And I keep telling him, it's no real technique. It's just confidence and using the force. So this is your trickiest bit where you can wreck the whole thing. It's got to go in with confidence. And he's right, like the times I've done it, you know, you're a bit unsure of yourself and you try and do it slow and steady. And in this case, slow and steady is not the way. Just get it in there. There's the making of pizza number two. Would you like to do the one of those Sure, I'll have a go at one. So I'm going to use the um, sun-dried pesto. Can't go wrong with mushies. How good does that look? And I'll finish it off with a bit of that grated parmesan. Spectacular. Yummy, yummy. We're ready. Alright, can't wait to see what it looks like. How good's that? I'm going to slide the next one in. Confidence. Now I would say that looks like a bought one, but to me that actually looks better than a bought one. That looks like the sort of stuff that pizzerias used to make. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. So um, thanks for joining us again, and um, we got some pizza to eat. Might just cut it up first. Yeah. Cheers. A lovely base. It's good. Thanks for watching. See ya. Thanks, celebrity chef Nigel.
And um, thanks for watching Byron's Veggie Cooking Show. Oh, no.